Good morning, afternoon, and evening to all of you people in virtual land. I am Charlotte Buchanan Yale, the director of the Museum of Native American History in Bentonville, Arkansas. It is my honor today to uh, introduce you to two amazing men that have so much in common. They are music itself. Uh, one of the things we want to do at the museum is just to highlight the good work of indigenous people making history today and also to be a conduit to spotlight, you know, all of their fast breaking news as well as, you know, all of their good works. So with that today, I would like to introduce you to a conversation between my good friend Troy Campbell from the House of Songs and the incredible composer of Michael Begay. Enjoy. Thank you, Charlotte. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here guest hosting uh, for the museum. I'm a big fan of the museums. And you were talking about great works and trailblazers. And uh, Michael Begay is, is one of those people now that when I think about that, I, I just started obsessing over him on the internet and looking for things. So that's a good sign. I nerded out on you. <laughs> so, so, so Michael, just for the, just for the listener, um, let's, let's, Let's go back to let's go back to the beginning of this year and, and uh, your work creating uh, original score, your podcast. So would you mind telling the, the listeners a, a little bit about it and where the inspiration came and what your what your vision is with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, early uh, early this year, we had a meeting with um, we uh, the organization that I work with, the uh, Native American Composers Apprentice Project which is uh, short for, for NACAP, or NACAP is short for that. <laughs> but um, we got together and, and um, we got an award through the Lewis Prize. And, and we were sitting with them and they were like, you know, this is so cool, like all of these stories that these young people have. And, you know, um, Delug from the Lewis Prize, he mm -hmm. said, wow, this would be a cool podcast. You know, would you guys you know, would you think about, you know, would you guys think about making a podcast? And then I have a history in radio um, and mass communication. So I was like, yeah, I could totally make a podcast. I never really even listened to a podcast before, <laughs> but I know about radio shows and how to put, you know, something together. So, so we said, yeah, we could totally do that. And, and then from there on, the gears just started rolling and, you know, we started uh, getting, um, you know, we got we got an award to do the show. So then that's when we started, you know, per getting getting some equipment and getting the show set up. So and and a lot of it is about the stories that these young people have, you know, and and, and a lot oftentimes during the premiere, they get to they get to introduce themselves and then they, you know, they have to hurry. And, you know, this is the title of my piece. I'm from, you know, Arizona, you know, I live on the reservation and, you know, and this is my piece, you know, so, but there's so much more that, that, that could be told. So that's kind of how we kind of got that going. Well, I, I love it. You give the, uh, you get the artist in that position of owning it, you know, uh, I'm telling you about it and here, here's listening. I like the, how diverse it was, where it was, I thought it was going to mostly be, you know, classical. And then you got the rock band in there and your dynamic just met with that you were just super you were just as excited about them as you were anything else you're talking about and i just realized that that's the musician in you you know you yeah. see <laughs> you see the beauty of what they're doing and the complexity too of it you know yeah, so and, and i call them a band too sometimes you know like <laughs> instead of like a string <laughs> quartet i'm like yeah you guys are a cool band you know <laughs> yeah you guys should make t-shirts for your quartet yeah <laughs> <laughs> well um uh, Man, uh, you're you're extremely dedicated to your apprentices, and uh, uh, I'm just wondering uh, what drives that dedication. Is it uh, you think about them as yourself, or or do you just have this drive, uh, like with the uh, podcast, to to get people in the right direction or to identify themselves? I think a lot of it is is a lot of that, you know, if not all of that. Um, you see, I, I kind of like look at it as like we light fires, you know, inside and it just takes that little spark, you know, and that push in the right direction and that little breeze to, you know, get it going. Boom. And, you know, a lot of it is is like uh, getting to see a lot of these a lot of these a lot of our students um, like move on to higher education and go to college, university and pursue music. And, and a few of them have done that. Um, and, and a lot of them are, are doing well with that. 
Um, and then a lot of it is like um, we encourage a lot of the students to sometimes make titles in their native language and stuff and 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 then um, a lot of the times it's a lot of their story and where they're where they're coming from um, and you know it's different for for everyone for each of the students I should say but but I think a lot of the motivation is um, getting uh, how do I say this like when I watch TV, I want to see like familiar faces on there too, you know, and action yeah. movies and, you know, and like, hey, there's actors out there. There's native actors. There's a whole ton of native musicians. And, you know, I mean, we're here. <laughs> yeah. So that's when once you, well, is getting them. Yeah. Out. Once you start looking, you start seeing. I grew up, you know, mm -hmm. uh, looking for anybody that even looked like me, whether they were uh, part Asian, white, or native. Mm -hmm. I would just desperately look for anybody, like you said. And when I'd find something, I started finding more. I would dig in a bit deeper. And you're right. That that makes somebody know they matter, but also that that it's possible. I mean, mm -hmm. so I'm just thinking about, um, you know, uh, when we spoke last, uh, talking about your childhood a little bit and your inspirations there. Uh, but I'm just fascinated by how you go from, from that to all this teaching to Carnegie Hall. I mean, it's just a very classic, cool story. But would you <laughs> mind telling the listener a little bit about yeah. your childhood and your inspirations there? Yeah, I um, I grew up, um, I was born on, on the reservation. I, I, I was born in, in Tuba City, Arizona, um, on the western side of the Navajo Nation. And then immediately, like my dad, see, like my dad, um, it was like uneducated. He only has like a third, three year. They used to have like a three year plan way back in the forties and fifties when they would take them off to school or boarding school or something. And they would give them only like three or four years of education. And then you get it like a certificate and then you get thrown into the workforce. So my, uh, my, my father, you know, he, he when I was born, he wanted like a better education for me and whatnot. So then after I was born, we we moved up towards Utah. And then um, that's where I kind of went to school there. I went to school here and there because um, I had to move around a lot. We, we had to move around a lot to look for for work and everything. So that's why I was telling you, like, I moved around and I was never in one school for more than two to three years. And, and I had to, like, make friends every 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 few years you know and in, in, in every new place that i that i moved to and we mainly moved back and forth between like arizona and utah and it was mainly back and forth and then you know different parts of arizona different parts of utah so um and that's when i kind of really got into music as a child because since i had to move around so much i had like a a tape recorder you know i have older brothers and they would record the music that i like so i was a little kid i didn't really know how to use a tape machine then you know but but i would say i like this song this song and then they would they would record the music that i like you know whether it be like you know motley Crue and you know all, all of these different you know it could be different things it could be marvin Gaye, you know and like yeah. ain't no mountain high enough and then yeah. you know i'd have like the police on there and you know men at work and different stuff like that motley Crue and all of this stuff and and i had my tape recorder and my you know my radio and fm stations that were all around as growing up and uh and then when i got into like my junior high years that's when i really kind of picked up a guitar when i was like 11 years old um there was an old acoustic classical in, in the shed that was kind of you know really old and i don't even know if it was working or not and you know i didn't know anything about tuning or nothing and uh, that's when I kind of got into that. So, and then after, let me see, after junior high, I started looking for music programs, you know, um, to be a part of music programs. Because junior high was more of like, you're in a choral music class, you know, you're, you're singing like 50s tunes and like uh, the hop, you know, playlist. That's what you're singing in junior high. And then in high school, I moved around and, and I went to this high school called Ironwood High School in um, Peoria and they had a performing arts department, but I kept getting put on the wait list. And that was kind of discouraging because I'm like, ah, I just want to learn some guitar. I want to learn some some stuff, you know, and I, could, I, I kept getting put on the wait list in high school. And then I found out that there was a program, a classical guitar program at Gray Hills Academy in Tuba City on the Navajo Nation. And so 
I was like, man, I want to go to school there, you know. And so I, I start to move up that way again. And and then by that time, my father's health was kind of going going down, you know, because he's just wor been working like hard labor most of his whole life providing for us. And that's kind of why I have a good work ethic is through him. And uh, so... So I moved back up this way, and I'm probably 16 or, or something like that, 15, 16. And I, I enroll into the high school, and then I find out that the classical guitar program has been canceled. And I'm already moved back to the reservation and enrolled into the high school. And <laughs> so that's kind of where I was at. And I'm like, I'm stuck up here now. And then I just kept pursuing music. and. There was a there was a librarian um, at that high school, Gray Hills Academy, and he was a retired percussionist for orchestra. And I and and all of my teachers were like, "Hey, this is you know Mike, you know and they're, they're you know they're introducing us together, you know, because I'm interested in classical music and and music in general, world music, every every kind of music." And there was a radio station at that high school, so it was like both of them, both of those worlds kind of met me at the same time, like radio and classical music writing and, and becoming like a, a student composer and whatnot. So it, it is very cool. And then, I, yeah, and then that's when I started uh, with the NACAP program as a student back in 2001. And that's when I worked with Brent Michael Davids, the, the Mohican con composer, and he was my first mentor in the program. And I started writing and I became very like attached to that program as a student and then after I graduated high school I started working at that radio station and then I was working with the comp the visiting composers at that time and I was traveling around with them um, on the road as an assistant to their com to the composer um, you know I was making copies and like uh, introducing the <laughs> class and stuff and yeah. I would do the first crash course for the first year students um, for those years and I'd be like this is a quarter note this is a whole note it's worth four beats and you know <laughs> I would do that at first and then um, and then eventually in 2000 uh, I'm sorry 2010 that's when I started like taking care of my own school like I was assigned to like you're gonna do uh, Hopi High School or you know you're gonna do Tuba High School and I would do the whole NACAP program for that school um, but I would have like Raven Chacon check on me now and then. He was my mentor at that time. So he would check on me and how how's everything going? Or are they working? And you know, and how's he going? Yeah. So it was it was really cool getting 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 through all of that. And yeah. No, that's a that's a great story. You become you become the mentor. Uh, but you <laughs> yeah. you did it you did it sweeping floors, you did it uh, the way you have to do it, which is study the masters and then give back continually. But oh, I, yeah. I yeah, I really, I really, uh, Doug, where you're talking about going, jumping around to different schools and, and I could tell that you're really good at, um, probably observing a crowd of people and then going in and figuring out how to sort of disarm them to let them know who you are as quickly as you can, or just to fit in. And so oh, that yeah. probably, probably helps a lot with, uh, working with kids or new kids is that, you know, how they feel, but you also know how to talk to them to, to, let, to let them know you're not here for any thing other than to see them excel oh yeah and, uh, definitely and especially yeah. building that trust you know and and yeah. um, and and then relating with them too like you know i was in your shoes you know especially that's what they really that's what they really dig and and uh but yeah yeah all, all of that moving around and especially when i was in school like i didn't even um think about like how they have like the the different cliques they have at school like you have the mm -hmm. sports people the rockers and i was all over all of that place so <laughs> you know, yeah. i was Looking hanging out the with the hip-hop people and yeah everybody yeah. so it was really cool like i i enjoyed all of my academic years and whatnot so <laughs> yeah. no that's great and, and it's the you know you go back to being the child listening to the radio i, I related to that i used to have an earpiece in a really cheap one uh, and I'd even sleep with it and then just run my thumb up and down the dial, uh, mm -hmm. to look for something to keep me awake. And it could be, uh, rock and roll, or it could have been some talk radio, or sometimes it would be radio theater, which I just stumbled mm -hmm. upon once on AM. Uh, 
But I remember that I would look at the world through that lens sometimes. It's like, well, just look for the station that suits you right now. Look for what you're interested in and go to that and then stay there as long as you can <laughs> until, yeah. until you have to build something else or, or learn something else. And that's probably why the House of Songs is like it is. It's not a traditional residency because I didn't want it to be. I wanted it to be an opportunity to get two or more people in a room just to create and if anything, hear each other's stories so they realize maybe they're not crazy or maybe that this is good work and that being an artist, uh, you find the others, you know, by just by, like you said, I just got up and that's what I wanted to do. And it started with the guitar in the shed. So I think every artist can relate to what you just said too, if, if they're willing to stick with it, you know? Oh so, yeah. That's definitely the thing is like sticking with it and practicing. <laughs> yeah. Long I mean, hours. Yeah. I was, I was talking to my mother uh, and she was just, you know, you know, how mothers are. And, but she said something that, you know, when I was touring and doing all this, every year she would ask me how it's going. She goes, every year you said, I think this is going to be the year. And she said, you never really specifically said what that meant, but it meant that you were going to work on something you really wanted. And she said, now you, you, you never stopped. And I said, well, it was the one thing that kept my attention is that it was much bigger than me because I couldn't put, uh, you can't put all the radio stations together. You just have to be able to paint it or describe it, you know, and why certain things are beautiful. So that's why I'm fascinated by uh, your orchestral work, as well as your your love of artists like Rocky Erickson. You and I had that little oh, yeah. big talk, and and I had that same feeling is that he's important to my radius, my mm -hmm. uh, all my stations. He's a he's a very important part of that. He kept me on that dial, you know. Yeah, so. definitely. <laughs> Especially about Rocky is that after you know, like so many years, you're listening to this like like metal or you know all of the stuff that you listen to and sometimes you're like you go to the record store and you're just going through the stuff and you're like man i wish there was something and that was that was that's what that was for me when i when yeah. i came across rocky erickson stuff is because like today's music you know i had to go back in time in order to find some stuff that i really like you know i had yeah. to find like older metal that that that's kind of kind of the thing that i'm on right now is sort of like i'm looking at all of these old 80s kind of like metal and guitar stuff and mm -hmm. and then that's kind of how i came across rocky erickson was was going back further you know like that yeah. and, and that's how i found that and and it was just like wow it felt i felt like 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 that like that kid again discovering music again like discovering finding that like metal album and going wow looking at the album art and and then you only have like 15 bucks so you can only buy like one of them and you're like <laughs> shoot this one has a lot of good art but this one has a lot of cool song titles and you're like jeez you know and yeah. and, then, and then you go home in the ride home and you have your earbuds in and you're like pushing play on the cd player and you're like oh and it's the whole world is like you know it's yeah and that's what that was like like bringing me back into the like like, oh, music is awesome yeah. still, and it still is great, you know, and, you know, so that, and that happened about, what, three, three, four years ago that I really, like, got reinvigorated with, like, creativity and, like, that extra boost again, yeah, and that's kind of, yeah. kind of what got me going to where I'm at now, yeah, <laughs> it's like, finding yeah, new so music good. again, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and knowing that you're, you stumbled on an innovator. Yeah, you know, there's lot there's lots of imitators and they're great and you can be a credible entertainer or whatever, but to stumble upon somebody that's truly innovating, even if they don't know they're innovating, is um, that was my dream. I, I wanted to make a living playing music, but I didn't really put too many rules on it. You know, mm -hmm. it's just I'm going to make a living playing music somehow, uh, and I'm going to see the world. But when I worked for Rocky as his uh, tour manager and got him going, I got to kind of see that he. Uh, saw some of his dreams come true, but the real dream for him was to be able to play music his whole life hmm. and to, uh, you know, especially with his mental health issues. And uh, I was very close to all of that, his schizophrenia. He, even even on a hard day, if we had a show, the moment he got on stage, it was as though everything just clicked. And he was so there. He was right in the zone. And I, I know when I'm in the zone, how great that is. But he could have just been telling me some crazy story before that. And I think, uh, I don't know how this is going to go tonight. There's 30,000 people and he may oh. go off on a tangent about the moon, which is fine because I'm here for that. Uh, and then he would just go right into it and he knew exactly 
when, you know, it was as though he never stopped being that person that was 18 and what he expected when he heard little Richard or something or whatever he listened to, you know, somebody, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, screaming Jay Hawkins or something like that. Mm-hmm. So for me, whenever I stop making my own music, it's usually to study a master. It's to mm-hmm. follow them for a while and just figure out, get myself back to base, you know? So yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. Well, when this COVID is over, maybe we'll go hit some concerts together. Cause I, I want you to come here to Northwest Arkansas where we're based. Mm-hmm. We're in Austin and New York, uh, but it's just a big old house. So like I said, uh, I would really be honored if you would come here, we'll bring you in, uh, do some work with the museum of native American history, but come here and you know, man, just innovate something like, yeah, come up, let's come up with something, to... an experiment to do, you know, just to do mm-hmm. it. That sounds really cool. I'd, I'd, I'd be honored to, to take part of that. Take part in that. That's really cool. Thank you. Uh, it'll be fun. It'll definitely be fun. But earlier, I was asking you about uh, being a, a kid on the, you know, you, you told me before uh, there's no running water and no electricity. and But then to be working uh, with Carnegie Hall, I mean, I just, I just love, I love that story so much, how that framed out. Uh, do you, but you, you probably have a story like that every couple months where you're working, working, and then something pops. Like today, you just were telling me about an interview you're doing and you're re- really super stoked about it. And it sounded great. Yeah, this, this interview as well, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this one is the one. <laughs> and yeah. then, yeah, yeah, that's another interview um, later on today. But um, I was really looking forward to this as well. I mean, this is this is amazing. And especially the House of Songs worked, you know, I, I was looking at the website and everything. And I was just getting excited, like, oh, wow, they got residencies. And there's an extended residency. And and then I was like, shoot, I could, I could probably make an EP during that whole time yes. or something like that. <laughs> or go all out and make an LP. <laughs> make an LP, yeah, long. <laughs> yeah, not an extended play, but a long mm-hmm. player. Yeah, you know? yeah. But I was like, oh, wow. And then I've just, my, my mind starts working like, I wonder what kind of instruments are in there. And, you know. And we got whatever you want. Yeah, yeah a lot yeah, of, so I, that's really my cool. goal was I never had a lot of instruments as a kid. Maybe I had the one guitar that I couldn't, no one would teach me, so I was I'd use like a screwdriver to make sounds with it. And mm. I think it was a 12 string. My mother thought it would be like twice the guitar. She saved up and got me this beat up 12 string, <laughs> which is, if you don't have lessons, that's probably the hardest guitar to try to figure out how to tune. And I, yeah. and I, but I spent a year just that's messing cool. with sound and I realized yeah, there's no wrong way, you know, if it entertained me and I came up with something. So it made the regular guitar seem so much easier to me. <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah. 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 So we've, we've got, every kind of instrument. In fact, the goal is to anywhere you reach, there's something that might inspire you. And mm-hmm. e- even though we have a deal with Gibson and people like that, there's always toy instruments. There's always something in a room that oh, I know cool. you you could drift off with, you know, like oh, an, wow. a, a, an experimental little Casio type keyboard. We, mm-hmm. Those are the things that I know someone will sit around and uh, write a song with. So that's all we ask is that you come here and have an open mind. And it seems oh, like you got all that. That's so you cool. got the, you got the, you got the application down. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and I, I can't wait for you to see the museum. Uh, mm-hmm. It's probably one of the finest museums of uh, Native American history in the United States. Oh, I think. Wow. You know, I, I'm a museum freak. So mm-hmm. when I years ago I quit drinking, and the thing I did on tour was I go find the museums, and initially it was to find the. Uh, in Europe, it was to find the bog men, the people that went out to the bog and got stuck, and then they were petrified. So I was collecting, oh, wow. like, yeah, I'd be in Ireland, or and I'd look it up. Well, okay, there's a bog, part of a bog man here. I'm going to go <laughs> look. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, you know, we have a lot of artists from all over, but I have a, a real affinity towards indigenous artists, whether they're from Greenland or from the Arctic Circle or uh, they're Navajo, it's because I'm looking for innovators that are trying to take something somewhere else to, you know, uh, taking oh, yeah. tradition and looking at where to go. That's why Sihasan, uh, I love them. They're my friends and Digging Roots up in Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've all been my guests here. And it's mostly just that I get to find out more about where they live. And they know there's a place here that is uh, totally stoked that they're here. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. So tell me about, are there any, um, not to, not to drift off of classical, mm-hmm. but I think you, you drive that way. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> tell me about some, tell me about some rock bands, uh, that are in the area, uh, that, that you, that you're really into right now, or you're listening to, or, uh, 
or any even solo artists that you think are, are good uh, in Arizona? Oh, wow. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been really listening to a lot of like, well, actually, I've been kind of getting into a lot of like noise kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, some of those noise artists aren't like uh, from from here too much <laughs> yeah. but um when if there are some 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 bands that i kind of um i really like um geez some of them are from albuquerque like um yeah. well, i didn't want to put you on the spot i can't remember <laughs> yeah, I tried to names find of people but but i, I know <laughs> that if i went all right in the noise band <laughs> yeah yeah there was some great there's some great like japanese noise bands and some of the old bands like out of germany like can mm -hmm. um there's just all this stuff that's just would take forever to explore, but oh, uh, yeah. electronic Especially, music is it? Yeah, electronic music is really fascinating to me. I, I learned about that in Denmark, and mm -hmm. they would have an entire folk school just learning electronic music, and it wasn't a phase. It's in, it's in fusing things. Uh, yeah, I, I still don't, for the life of me probably couldn't do it, but I fascinated by it. Yeah, I just started like okay, so like a year. I'm, I'm about two years going into working with this studio here. Um, mm -hmm. And I've just started to like explore trying to find acts to, 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 uh, to feature and stuff. So I'm still kind of new to finding everybody around this area and stuff. And a lot of the times there, there, there are a lot of like, like, um, like bands. And then there are some singer songwriters. Um, but yeah, I haven't really um, contacted too many of these local artists here that I already know that that are from like, uh, geez, like like the native uh, music scene, like Bill Miller yeah. and you know stuff oh, yeah. like that. Bill Miller's great. Yeah, yeah, and he's like one of those ones that kind of influenced me too on the acoustic. Um, I like listening to a lot of his stuff. Um, I remember there was this other artist from North Dakota. I think it was Annie Humphrey. Annie Humphrey was really good. Um, there's some. Uh, there's an all uh, all girl metal band from Albuquerque that I really like called Suspended. And oh, I'm gonna all, write that down. On a yeah. Suspended. Yeah, they're they're, <laughs> they're an all girl uh, metal band. Um, they're called Suspended. And then there, I believe there's another Northern Arizona band that has a female front called um, Weed Rat. We read, um, <laughs> yeah, and then there's another all girl metal band um, from Tuba City as well. They're they're like in high school. Um, they're called Bigfoot, so they have yeah. like a big Bigfoot mascot, Sasquatch looking kind of character for their for their band, and it's pretty <laughs> cool. Like I think I think their their dad is like the drummer or something, and it's really cool. You uh, just listed a lot of art. You were like I, I can't remember the names, and then it's like you just started digging in. Yeah. Now, you, now yeah. you're at Bigfoot. Yeah, the most yeah, obscure Bigfoot, band. The you, local. You, you knew their name. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We actually donated some of the some some equipment to them from from my band, from my metal band. Yeah. So oh, we, man. We, we we do a lot of stuff like that. Like we don't we don't post it like on on social media. Like we're giving this away. You know, we just we just do it. Like nobody knows. But uh, yeah, yeah, we we give out like a, like some old PA equipment and PAs themselves and speaker cabinets like I, I know i gave the i know i gave the girls like my i gave them like a like a two of my marshall half stacks that i use they were like Whoa, my very man. first they were like my first stack cabinets you know they're like entry levels cabinets but i, I just mm -hmm. we just gave that to them and then you know some instruments some guitars and yeah whatever uh, i can like if i i have that mentality like like you know i i, I grew up like i wouldn't want to say like poverty but 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 i grew up like just getting by you know and but we're but we're happy you know <laughs> yeah and that's why I, I like even to this day i only have like one acoustic one one classical one electric you know and i have one bass and I, you know i don't i don't have like all of these rack of guitars yeah. and stuff it's like i make do with what i got and you know mm -hmm. and then I, I use it into the i run it into the ground and then i buy a new instrument or something yeah so yeah but you 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 put it forward i love that that uh we try that at the house we, instead of just saying hey you should co ride we're going to put you online we've been doing this but initially it was like let's get some people to write uh, that even just live here but online and get them used to that 
And uh, my team were starting to discover that most people didn't have real access or they didn't even have internet. They were taking it from a neighbor's house or they might be using their phone and they were expecting to do a concert using that. Or yeah. they, uh, and so we started going, well, the real problem is no one was prepared. Uh, no one ever is prepared for a pandemic, I suppose. Uh, so we started finding ways to just kind of quietly give artists the exact equipment they needed, whether it was a light, uh, mm -hmm. a better camera. And that, and now we're, you know, doing a year of internet because we just realized that will keep you working and inspired by having something consistent. So the things like that, like just somebody giving me more tools for my toolbox, <laughs> I think they, they're just telling me they know I'm going to build. Yeah. And that's yeah. all that matters. Like, that's what you said. This deck it wasn't about, it was about, you know, that's treasure, but you know, those are tools and someone's going to build something. And that probably means just as much to you as, uh, you know, doing your own metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's my metal. I flail my head, but I hurt my neck the other day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and is your band playing? And what's your band called? The, the metal band? Oh, my metal band is called uh, Acclamation. Like A-K-K-L-A-M-A-T-I-O-N. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like a German it? word, I believe, for like a, like a, uh, like a, instead of a formal ballot system of approval, it's like a crowd oh. going, yeah. That's yes. a great name. Yeah. <laughs> Acclamation. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm in, I'm in this it? other, I'm in another rock group called Lozen as well. Um, Lozen. that's another, yeah, that's a different, that's another rock group that I'm in. Um, so I'm in, yeah. I'm in two bands. Yeah. And then now do you do any, uh, do you do any sort of traditional songwriting in those bands, like writing the songs or are you more the lead guitarist and, uh, uh you know, I'm sort of pull together the, the arrangements on the metal. Yeah, I do. I, Oh yeah, I do uh, arrangements. I do. I definitely do arrangements and you know, we, and then, um, and then in Lozen, we kind of all collaborate together in that one. Um, and then I, I do a lot of the, the audio editing and engineering for both bands. So that's, mm -hmm. that's one thing I do a lot on there. Um, but, uh, right, right now I'm, I'm really like working on my, my composition aspect as a composer, because I got so much work as a doing doing composition work like uh, arrangements so i'm working on two arrangements with like the uh the northern uh, orchestra of northern arizona so i got two uh -huh. two of my string quartets that i'm turning into an orchestration and then i have a new um i have a new composition coming out in boston that's due in february and that's for a, a new a new work for cello a soprano and percussionist so that's going to be totally experimental, especially with the percussionists. I'm really excited about that. Um, and uh, and, and then I'm doing another arrangement for them as well from one of my old string quartets. So they're going to do, I think it's out of Boston, something um, yeah. making music out of Boston. Or oh, I'm sorry. It, 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 I oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, going through, yeah, you're going through your schedule and it's just like, bam, bam, bam. Uh, there, there's a, there's two really good symphonies up here. And, and, and as you started talking, I was thinking, well, that could be plan A of getting you here is to work with Charlotte in the museum. But we, uh, we intersect with uh, the orchestra and try to find how to create uh, a piece with you and them that could be performed at the new hall here called the Momentary, which has oh, a good wow. name. I like that the Momentary. Cool. Like a new word? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, or just, just something and to challenge mm -hmm. them, but uh, but come here first and just sort of meet people yeah. and explore that idea. Uh, but cool. then secretly, you know, I'm going to find a metal band for you to inspire. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, so you're going to have to work all the different altitudes. that. You, that oh, you that would be at. so cool. I mean, I really yeah. love being in all of the different genres you know like yeah. i had and that was that that was that that was that teacher that 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 that, that uh, helped me back in um, high school and he was like you know you really like metal and stuff but if you just stay with metal you're only going to be in this one little thing mm -hmm. you know and then he goes but if you have everything else you know you'll have more opportunities to work with people and and stuff and so so now I so yeah so now I'm like doing hip hop. I have this. Uh, uh, I work I work with this other hip hop guy named uh, Mr. DV. I write all the music for him, 
and he does all of the the lines and stuff and that's how i got these glasses um they, he owns the uh he owns they own the uh, eyeglass company here in here in tuba city and i'm like hey i need to uh, i need some eyeglasses because i just got my subscript uh, prescription and yeah. uh and they said well, here's, you know, here's, this is how much it's going to be for your, for your eyeglasses and shades. And then uh, it's like, okay, cool. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll do half now, half later. And then they said, no, you could work with the, you know, you could work with the, well, it was the owner. And then the, the lady goes, you could work with my husband because he's trying to do an EP. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So we did a barter right there. So I got like, I did eight, I'm doing eight songs for him. And then um, I write all the music and produce it all for him. And then uh, he, um, does all the, the, the lyrics and whatnot. And, and I sit there with like my headphones and we're, we're both sitting there and, you know, I'll come up with a beat and he really wants the whole thing, like an eighties kind of a uh, feel. Yeah. So we have a yeah. lot of like, do, do, ch, do, 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 you yeah. know, some big fat, you know, yeah. Fat box. boy stuff. And yeah. Stuff. And, yeah. And, and, and I have like, and, and my vision is having it be, yes, it is like an eighties kind of a, thing but i want different genres of the 80s so i have like this song that's like a like a carlos santana 80s vibe and then yeah. i have like a like a uh i have like a techno noir kind of sound like a retro mm -hmm. techno you know and then i have like the old beatbox kind of uh, hip-hop with the boo boo you know <laughs> it's, it's no, really it's your fun. radio it's so many radio stations you got on that that band with the yeah 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 the yeah. album will just yeah. cover all yeah. these it just, but, yeah it just keeps it just keeps happening yeah but I it'll be that. an 80s umbrella though <laughs> yeah oh good good you yeah. could, maybe he'll maybe he'll use that in the title of his ep ep's got to have a cool cover and a cool title yeah or it's we just got, we got two singles EP. out already yeah really yeah would you it, yeah, email me those. Okay, I just like yeah. to hear them because I want to hear fun. what kind of what kind of beats you're building and stuff. How are you building them? What do you just uh, do? You have any sort of software or something? Well, one like of them to? I did all on 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 the fly. Like I didn't I didn't use a MIDI step or anything. So one of them I did the piano work, all of it. Like I didn't use an yeah. arpeggiator going do 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 do. I did it. Yeah. I really did it. Like <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> two minutes of this man do, 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 <laughs> and i'm really doing the beat like do, do, ch, do, 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 on the keyboard yeah. you know and that's that well i'll send you the stuff it's on youtube right now like, that's it yeah, that's, that's the metal that's the metal in you man which is like i gotta do every note <laughs> or, it's, yeah. or it's or it's or it's a lie they're gonna call me sick <laughs> if i don't do it all <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah no one's yeah. gonna call me out on this man yeah <laughs> i got carpal tunnel now <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> oh man uh, so I, i'm not gonna keep you much longer though i would love to just keep talking so that's why i'm gonna invite you here and bring you in great, uh, great. just just so we can hang out again that's the house awesome. that's the other thing is uh we try to make friends and then we figure out ways to see each other which ends up being touring and working on something cool uh, so yeah so is there anything um you want uh, our audience to know about that you're working on currently that they could look up because uh when i went out there i found things that were all over but there was just this sort of continuity about mm -hmm. your vision but is there anything uh be, you know there's a podcast and you can find Ooh. lots of different videos but is there anything yeah. right now somebody should reach out to uh, yeah, I'm doing the podcast. You can find that on uh, Mixcloud. It's called um, Original Score, an Indigenous Perspective on Music. Uh, I'm also working on two, my, my first orchestral arrangements for um, orchestra with the Orchestra of Northern Arizona, which should be out uh, early 2021. And I'm working on a new piano concerto with uh, a, an Italian pianist named Emanuele Archiuli. And that's for that's the Carnegie Hall piece. So that's going to be later in 2021. Um, there, that, that's also going to be along with other native uh, composers as well. Um, so I'm not just going to be the only one with that. There's going to be there's going to be a little handful of us um, writing for for um, Emanuele. Um, and also. Um, Geez, I got some more. Uh, oh, oh, it was Shelter Music in Boston. Um, they'll be featuring me uh, for a concert. Um, there'll be a four night concert featuring um, students and alumni from the Native American Composers Apprentice Project. Mm -hmm. 
And the first night or one of the nights, they're going to feature a lot of my work and, and, and there will be a new arrangement and a new composition for um, cello, soprano and uh, percussion. So I'm working on that new new one. Um, I think that's due in like February first or something. But uh, uh, it, it's all good. Yeah, uh, it's very uh, no, it very fun working you know, on this stuff. Yeah, I forgot to ask you. I, I got a friend, and maybe you know her. I mean, she's a really good. Uh, Chris Dirksen, who lives in Canada, and she has a thing called mm. the Powwow Orchestra. She's a cellist, but she does a lot of loops and electronic stuff. And I worked over over in Spain and Sweden with her, but she. She just gets in the zone. I brought her here and uh, she played out the forest with, uh, she, she's played with everyone, but like Buffy St. Marie, she was with her. Oh, wow. time. So she does these other things, but then she has a vision of everywhere she goes, she has to find people to collaborate and build something new with. So uh, I'd love to introduce you to her. I'm, just, I'm going to be interviewing her uh, soon, talking about adventures and stuff. Oh, wow. But, uh, <laughs> she's really a cool lady. Yeah. That's really cool. That. I've been thinking about this other show too. Like that just brings it up. Like I, w I was really wanting to put this show together called Common Ground, where yeah. I would go around and work with different musicians, and we find that common ground where we're like, hey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's, just throwing it's it. Yeah. We 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 brought Chris up here to do uh, what's called the Forest Series, uh, and it's out in the woods. It's a stage, and a couple thousand people come. But Charlotte and I collaborated on bringing uh, not just a traditional artist, but someone that was taking form somewhere, but using tradition. And oh, wow. uh, she came down and she had Angela from Tribe Called Red dancing. I mean, it was really cool, but, it, but it, hold on, sorry. But at the end of the show, we're all kind of getting in the van and we're in the forest and Chris is late because well, Chris can be late, but she jumped in the van with me and she, I go, what's up? And I was great. And she goes, man, just the coolest thing happened. And I said, what happened, Chris? And she goes, well, there's this like 13 year old girl came up to me and said, I made my parents drive me three hours to see you because I saw your photo. And I never, and she said, I never saw a skin playing the instrument like that before. And that's the instrument I want to play. And she, and she was like, she goes, isn't that cool? And I just started <laughs> like weeping. I go, that's why I do this because yeah. that girl needed to see you and you needed to hear that. And that just keeps it going. So I, yeah. I applaud you for doing that every single day, man. Uh, thank I, you. I, yeah, and 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 thank you for being a part of this. And uh, thanks to the Museum of Native American History for allowing me to kind of just jump in on their on their uh, podcast. But we we right. we help each other all the time, and I I love that museum. So Michael, great. I wish you great success, and uh, you'll be hearing from me more and more. So great, you know, great. Be be wary. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely send you some stuff I'm working on. It'd be really cool. Um, thank oh, you, Charlotte. Thank you, Troy. And oh thank gosh. you, Evan. <laughs> Both of you have just made our virtual day to day. And also, please, <laughs> Michael and Troy, always, you know, the Yenta in me reaches out to you. Please send me everything that you're doing that we can share it on social media, that we can spotlight all of the great things you're doing. And Ooh. like Troy said, I mean, Common Ground, what a great idea. We, <laughs> we support you absolutely. So absolutely. thank you all. I'll see you in virtual world and in Bentonville soon. Great. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you much. Guys.